I said in my video about the incredible PS2 emulator for Mac, but I wanted to make my own ultimate PlayStation 2. And that's exactly what we're doing here today. Imagine having your entire library on a hard drive, a flash drive, or even an SSD. Imagine being able to play with a decent third-party controller, your DualSense, or an Xbox controller? And imagine if it was so easy to do that anyone could do it. Oh, and it's all in 1440p. Let's start with this thing. This is the RetroTINK 5X Pro. This will upscale your video signal via component or SCART and output to HDMI. It's a fantastic little device that is not cheap. It's a lot of money at $300, but I'd say it's worth it for many reasons. Not only is it gonna take your PS2 from this to this, but it's gonna do it for your original Xbox, your Dreamcast, your GameCube, and much more. Now, yes, I know. $300 is still a lot of money. That's a whole Series S. But with how much the various HDMI mods are and how hard it is to get a hold of one, this will save me a lot of money for practically the same results. Here we have the first God of War with just regular composite cables. And here it is with the power of the RetroTINK 5X Pro. The difference is shocking. It takes the 480p signal from the PlayStation and upscales it to 1440p. You can change a ton of different settings to make it the right look and resolution for you, and it's constantly being updated for a great experience. I think I would rather have the HDMI mods for each console, just because it would be less cables and boxes for me. Plus, you know I love hardware mods, so I'll probably end up doing them once they're available. But that'll be way in the future when I can afford it. So subscribe so you don't miss that. But the PS2 doesn't even have an HDMI mod yet, so it doesn't matter. So let's move on to the only hardware mod of this video, the Noctua Fan Mod. Now this is honestly completely unnecessary for most people, in my opinion, but there's a story behind this one. The PlayStation I've been holding onto for this project might just be the most disgusting console I have ever worked with. This isn't disgusting in the sense of bugs, but I have never seen a console so dusty in my life. They had to have played this in a barn and stored it in a vacuum cleaner for safekeeping. I soaked the outer shell in hot soapy water and now it looks great. On the outside, I did my best with the internals, but it was so much dust. And after I cleaned everything up, I drove a screw right through the ribbon cable for the power button. The power button already wasn't working, but I had just fixed it before I tore the ribbon cable. And because I'm impatient, or maybe because I am patient, I rewired the entire ribbon cable by hand. Now the power button works, and the eject button doesn't. Oh well, we don't need the disk drive. More on that later. But with all that dust built up in the fan, it sounded like a jet turbine. Luckily, we can make it nearly silent by modifying a Noctua fan to work with the PS2. And even though this is a hardware mod, it's practically plug and play once you tear the whole thing down. I bought this from Amazon and it comes with everything you need to just drop it in. It gives the console a little bit of a booty bump, but it's really not a big deal since we have the network adapter. Either way, you can hardly hear any noise with the new fan other than the hard drive. This Chungus may be noisy, but it's got all of my games on it. This is an old IDE drive. I've been holding on to this for a while because it's a 250 gigabyte drive meant for this console. That's a pretty big drive for back then. Now yes, I could get the SATA mod for the network adapter, but I just don't think there's much benefit since I have the right drive. The PlayStation 2 is just not built to take advantage of the SSD speeds. You can do this with a USB drive too, so you can do it with the slim models as well. The sucky part is these are USB 1.0 speeds, so they're gonna be slow to load. But how do you do all this? With this little guy here. This is a memory card with Free McBoot on it. Free McBoot is essentially a custom firmware for your PS2. There are a lot of things you can do with it, like emulators, but the only thing I really care about is HD Loader. This is where we can put all of our games on our drive and where we can play them. You can legally back up your games by inserting the disc and downloading it. I should mention that this is a very slow process to back up all your games this way, but it's worth it. Or if you've already legally backed up your game somewhere else like me, you can use this software on your PC to transfer your games to whatever drive you want to use. And now you can simply select whatever game you want and play it without needing to insert the disc. What's even cooler is none of this is a permanent mod. You can just remove the memory card and it'll boot up like normal. You can take the memory card and the drive filled with your games, plug them into any of your friend's PS2s, 
and all your stuff is there and ready to go. If your console dies like this one probably will soon, keep your memory card and drive and use it in your new one like nothing ever happened. But the last piece of my ultimate PS2 is the controller. I know the comments are gonna eat me alive for this one, I don't like the early PlayStation controllers. They're too small and I really despise the dome top sticks. So initially, I looked to the company who made the controller from my Ultimate N64 video. The Retrofighters Defender is a wireless controller built for the PS1, PS2, and PS3. It's also compatible with the PlayStation Classic, Switch, and PC, so it's very versatile. It's a more modern style controller that feels great in the hands and even has a turbo button. All the buttons, sticks, and triggers feel great. I really don't have any complaints about this guy. However, what's better than buying a good third-party controller? Using your favorite controller that you already own. This little guy allows you to use any of your favorite Bluetooth controllers on your PS1 or PS2, which means I can use my ultimate modded DualSense on my ultimate PS2, which you should get subscribed because I I got a video coming up on a controller that might just be better than the upcoming DualSense Edge. This adapter is actually super simple to use by just plugging it in and pressing the pair button. It supports a ton of different controllers like the Xbox and the later PlayStation controllers. Apparently even the Joy-Cons for some reason. I don't know why you would want to, but you can. It's not like you can swing your arms to control the blades of chaos, but there's unfortunately no motion controls. But that's everything I put into my ultimate PS2, and somehow none of it requires soldering. I'll have links for everything you'll ever need for this in the description down below. If I forgot something, kindly leave a comment. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you enjoyed me, hit that subscribe button. You might just be my 50,000th subscriber. What ultimate console should we do next? I'm thinking the Dreamcast or maybe the Game Boy Color. We'll see, but for now, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. We'll see. But for now, that car's gonna drive by.